good. How you living in today's English lesson? I am going to teach you English slang that starts with the letter F. Instead of saying hello, I used some slang terms and I want to help you understand English slang so that you won't be lost and so that you can start using them too. You ready? Well then, I'm teacher Tiffany. Let's jump right in. Number one, slang starting with the letter F. The first one is flex. Good. Again, after me, flex. Nice. Last time, flex. Excellent. Now, flex, it just means to show off or boast about one's achievements, possessions, or skills to boast about these things. So let's say, for example, I have an iPad. Now I use this iPad for work to help me teach you English better. But I want you to imagine I got the first iPad that came out this year. Brand new iPad. Woo! Looking good. And I go up to my friend. I wouldn't do this, but just as an example, and I say, you know, I got the new iPad. I mean, it's the top of the line. It's amazing. It's new. I'm flexing. <laughs> you caught it, right? Again, flexing just means you're boasting about your possessions, your skills, or your achievements, making it seem like you are better than other people. You got it? Now, you know, I'm not like that, but to understand the term, I had to show you a little bit. So number one, we have flex. Now, what about the second slang term again, that starts with the letter F. The second one is fire. Good again, fire. Excellent. Now this just means we use it when we're trying to describe something as excellent, amazing, or highly impressive. For example, true. I would like another car. My dream car right now is a Lexus IS sporty while at the same time being a four door car. The car is fire. Whenever I see it driving on the highway, I turn my head to follow it down the road. Why? Because the car is amazing. The car is impressive. The car is fire. You got it, right? Yes. This slang term is extremely useful. Again, in English, we say fire. Maybe you have a car that in your opinion is also fire. All right, here we go. The next one, number three, the third slang term is fam. Yeah, you're probably guessing what it means. I hid it from you this time again, fam. Excellent. Last time after me, fam. Great job. So what does this mean when we say fam? It is short for the word family, but it refers to family or close friends. And it's used to refer to a group of people you are close with. For example, some of the friends I made while living in South Korea have become, become more like family. So I can say, Hey, what's good fam? How you doing fam? They're not related to me by blood, but they're so close to me. I feel like they're family. I can say, what's going on fam? How you been fam? So if someone says, Hey fam, how are you? They feel close to you. Make sense. Excellent. All right. So the third slang term we have is fam. Now let's go to number four. The fourth one, again, using the letter F the fourth one is flaky. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you've heard this one again, flaky. Excellent. Last time after me flaky. Great job. Now, what does this slang term flaky actually mean? Because bread can be flaky. What does flaky mean? It means someone who is 
unreliable, often canceling plans or not following through on commitments. Let me, let me describe it like this group of friends. You call one friend, Hey, uh, Barbara girl, this weekend, we are going to hang out. We're going to meet Saturday night at 8 PM. Barbara, can you come girl? Yes, I'll be there. Barbara says, yes, I will be there. Saturday rolls around. 7:30 PM. Everyone's leaving their homes to head out to meet at the restaurant. Everyone's like, Hey y'all, we'll be there. See you soon. Barbara. Oh guys, I'm so sorry. I don't think I'll be able to make it. Everyone in the group. Okay. Barbara. Why? They're not surprised. Barbara is very flaky. She'll say that she'll do something. She'll say that she'll be somewhere and then she won't come. Barbara is very flaky, unreliable. You caught it. Excellent. All right. So flaky, don't be flaky. Flaky is not a good thing to be. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's move on to number five. What is number five? Again, using the letter F we have this slang term faded. Good. Again, after me faded. Excellent. Last time after me faded. Great job. Now you might've heard this term used in a movie or a television program. Why? Because it literally means to be intoxicated, drunk, or under the influence of drugs or alcohol. I want you to think about a television program you've seen, or maybe a movie you've seen where the character or characters were drinking a lot of alcohol or doing drugs. And after they did the drugs or drank the alcohol, suddenly, I mean, their eyes kind of glazed over. They kind of were sitting back in their seats or they just weren't all there. They weren't able to speak coherently. They weren't able to understand what was happening in those situations. You can say, ah, they're faded, intoxicated or under the influence makes sense, right? Excellent. Again, the real reason why I try to teach you these slang terms is so that when you watch programs, when you hear conversations between native English speakers or in person, or maybe online, you won't be confused. I got you. I care about you. All right. So we're going to move on to number six, but before we go to number six, I want to remind you, remember I have an app and this app, I want to put it on the screen for you. English with Tiffany. After each lesson, you can practice what you are learning. You can quiz yourself. You can have fun rehearsing and reviewing what I am teaching you in the lesson. So if you don't already have the app, click the link in the description or go to your phone and download the English with Tiffany app and start practicing what you learn in each of my English lessons. All right. So don't forget to download the app and practice after this lesson. Let's move on to number six, number six, starting with the letter F again, we have face plant. Good again, after me face plant. Excellent. Last time after me face plant. Great job. So what does this mean? Face plant. Here's the definition of face plant to fall forward and land face first on the ground face plant. Let's say you go somewhere with your friends and you're all running, right? You're running together and you trip. Oh no. Bow. Sorry if that was loud for you, but you hit your face. Uh Oh, face planted. That is a slang term. It means face plant. You literally hit the ground and your face hit the ground as well. In English, we say face plant makes sense. All right, good. Let's keep it moving. Here we go. Let's move on to number seven. Number six was a little bit easier to understand because it's kind of literal. Number seven flop. Good again after me flop. Excellent. Last time after me flop. Great job. Now this just means when you're describing something that is a complete failure or disappointment, you use the term 
flop. We tried to start a business. We put so much money into the business. We bought a building. We hired people, but it failed. It completely flopped again, failure or disappointment. I flopped. I thought I was going to do well, but I failed. It was a complete flop. Make sense. Again, you're going to hear these terms when you're looking at videos on Instagram or TikTok or watching a video on Netflix or YouTube or even a movie on regular TV. Now you'll know what these terms actually mean. Let's go on to number eight. Number eight, again, starting with the letter F, what does this slang term mean? After me, fierce. Good. I guarantee you'll hear this on social media. Again, after me, fierce. Excellent. Last time after me. Fierce. Great job. Now this literally is used to describe someone or something as bold, intense, or powerful. For example, many people say Beyonce is fierce, bold, powerful, intense. Someone that demands or commands respect. They walk into a room. Wow. Wow. Or someone walks into a room. Normally we say fierce when we're speaking about a female, about a woman, right? Walks into the room, great outfit, hair done, makeup looking good. Okay, girl, you are fierce, intense, powerful. You got it? All right. Excellent. Okay. Let's move on to number nine. Again, slang terms, starting with the a letter F we have flexing. Good, good. <laughs> you got it right again. Flexing. Excellent. We're going to stop there. Why? Because number one was what? Do you remember? Flex. Flexing and flex. Same meaning. But I wanted to make sure you understood. Someone might use it in this way. Okay. You trying to flex on me. That's number one. Or number two. I see you flexing. I see you flexing. You see same meaning, but different form of the word. So again, similar to flex, but often used to describe someone who is showing off or pretending to be something they're not. Oh, you flexing. That's not your car. For example, pull up in a Lamborghini. Yeah. You guys like my car? Yeah. You flexing. That's not your car. You're trying to act like it is, but it's not. You caught it. Excellent. So again, we say flexing, stop flexing. All right. And number 10, the 10th slang term using the letter F fronting. Yes. Do not say fronting. We don't say fronting. Remember this is slang after me fronting. Good. Last time after me fronting. Excellent. Now this just means Similar to pretending or acting it's used to describe someone who is putting up a false front or trying to deceive others. Again, going back to the other example, I used someone driving a Lamborghini. Now they're driving a Jaguar. They're acting like they own the Jaguar when actually it belongs to their friend. It's not theirs. They pull up. Y'all like my new car? No, stop fronting. That's not yours. Stop acting like it's yours. Stop fronting. You caught it. Excellent. All right. Now these slang terms, again, they will help you understand TV, social media, and so many other things. And you also can use them too, not in a professional setting, but with your friends. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope you start using these terms and don't forget. I will see you in the next lesson. You still there? <laughs> you know what time it is. It's story time. Hey, I said it's story time. One more time. I said it's story time. Hey, I said it's story time. All right. Now this one, this is a good one. This is a good one. So 
two weeks ago, about no, a week ago, I had a class with my students, right? Again, I have students in my program. If you want to join us, come join our family, please. All you have to do is go to dailyenglishlessons.com. So anyways, we were having our monthly meeting. And in our monthly meeting, I happened to bring up a slang term. The slang term was referring to the other teacher, teacher Carly, an amazing teacher. She and I were chit chatting, right? But I naturally said, oh yeah, we were chit chatting it up. And I said, wait a minute, this is a slang term that the students have not heard before. So I brought everyone back to the main room. We were on Zoom. And I said, okay, everyone, I'm going to teach you a slang term. This expression is a little bit long, so just follow me. And I started slow. I said, chit chatting it up. All right? Four words, chit chatting it up. We started slow, right? And I said, in the end, the purpose is for you to be able to say it like this, chit chatting it up. Oh, we're just chit chatting it up very quickly. It just means to basically shoot the breeze, just talking to each other, right? So I was going through and explaining it and I realized it was kind of a tongue twister. I realized that I had to pick a different method to help the students be able to say it. So I said, all right, guys, this is what I want you to do. Think about rhythm. I have students from all over the world, right? I said, listen, guys, don't focus on the words, focus on the sound and the rhythm. They said, okay, teacher, what do you mean? I said, all right, guys, chit chatting it up, chit chatting it up chit chatting it up. And as soon as I started uh, snapping my fingers and moving my body, I could see everyone, different cultures, different countries. They said, okay, tip, chit chatting it up, chit chatting it up. And they were getting it. So we were all smiling like, okay, listen, music helps, rhythm helps. And there was one student and I could see on her face. She said, mm -mm, nope, 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 literally. So I'm looking at everyone. I said, okay, everybody stop, everyone stop. So let's say her name was Samantha. I won't call her out. Let's say her name was Samantha. I said, Samantha, I see you. She said, oh no. I said, it's okay. I'm gonna call you out. Samantha, let me know what's wrong. She said, Tiffany, I can't do it. I said, yes, you can. I said, Samantha, listen, follow me, follow me. Snap with me, chit chatting it up, chit chatting it up, chit chatting it up. And so slowly but surely she was getting it. She said, okay, Tiff, I can try. I said, now follow me again, chit chatting it up. And she did it. So we're all like, yeah, Samantha, you did it, you did it. She said, Tiff, but there's one problem. I said, what, Samantha? She said, I can't sing. I said, but baby girl, you're rapped today. <laughs> she burst out laughing. I said, well, listen, you just rapped today, chit-chatting it up. As long as you can follow the rhythm and the beat, you can say it. So we all got a good laugh, and I think that's something the students that attended that class will never forget. And I want to remind you as well, if there's ever something difficult to say, you're trying to follow the intonation, it's too quick or it's too long. Think about it like a song. Think about the sounds instead of the words and it will change your life. Hope you enjoyed this story and I'll talk to you in the next lesson.